Hi there, and thanks for visiting. This is Jennifer McGuire. So a few weeks ago, someone asked me my, what my favorite technique was. Well, I share a lot of techniques, and I have several different favorites. But I think my favorite distress ink technique is ink transfer. Now, in the past, I have called this faux monoprint, but I think ink transfer, transfer is probably a better name for it. Now, this is a technique that you can do if you have any die cutting machine and if you have any stamps or stencils. You can use other dye inks besides distress, distress ink, but I find distress ink definitely works the best because it reacts so well with water. So I'll first show you a bunch of examples of this technique using stamps and stencils, and then I will show you how I turned some of them into cards, and in my next video I'll have even more ways to turn them into cards. Okay, let's get started by using this ink transfer technique on some backgrounds. I'm starting with white cardstock. Any heavyweight white cardstock should work. I'm using Nina Classic Crest Solar White, 110 pound, because I know it'll hold up well while I do this technique. Now I'm using my Waffle Flower Water Media Mat, that's that white surface, because it kind of holds the paper while I apply ink to it. I am direct to paper applying Tim Holtz Distress Ink. You want to put down as much ink as possible while doing this. So I do not recommend using an ink blending tool to do this. I think it's better to go direct to paper with the pad. That way you get a lot of ink in the paper. The more ink you have in the paper, the more intense this technique will be. I'm making most of my background solid because that's the look I'm going for today. You can do multiple colors, which you'll see me do later, but most of them are solid. I also recommend using darker or vibrant colors for this. Softer colors don't transfer as well. The transfer is very soft, so brighter is better. Now I have a bunch of white cardstock pieces covered with Distress Ink here. The ones on the left are the ones I'm using today. They're darker and more vibrant. The ones on the right I'm saving for later for a different project, but while I had my products out, I thought I'd go ahead and do them now. That's a tip that I recommend for any crafter as it makes better use of our time and allows us to create more. Now that I have a bunch of cardstock covered heavily with darker distress ink, let's do our ink transfer technique and start with examples using stamps. I use background stamps today to save time, but you definitely could use individual stamps to cover a background if you want. All right, so I have my Misty stamping tool here just because it's handy. I have a sticky mat inside of my Misty tool to hold my cardstock in place. This is white cardstock covered heavily with peacock feathers ink. I use my anti-static powder tool on it, and now I'm inking up a background stamp with Versamark ink. This is the Simon Says Stamp Spring Blooms background stamp. It's new and it is excellent for this technique. A great background stamp. Now I'm heat embossing this with clear embossing powder. Basically, we're trapping blue ink behind our clear embossing powder so that when we do the technique later, it stays that true color underneath, but the area around it will change. You'll see in a moment. Okay, now I have a piece of light blue cardstock white would work here or anything light in color. I'm using a piece of temporary tape to create a little hinge between the two. This is really helpful for this technique. Now I have my Spellbinders Platinum 6 die cut machine ready. Any die cut machine will work. I'm using a mat to cover up the light cardstock piece so I don't get it wet and I'm generously spraying the inked piece with the heat embossing with water. I'm using my Tim Holtz sprayer, any spray bottle will work, and I'm very generously spraying it. After I've sprayed it, I will close our little hinge there, put it between the two cutting plates, and run it through our die cut machine. Basically, I'm using the die cut machine as if I had a piece of cardstock and a die, like we usually use it, but really all I have are those two pieces of cardstock. We're just applying pressure to them which will cause the ink from our heat embossed paper to transfer over to that plain light blue cardstock piece. So check this out. When we open it up, you can see how we've transferred some of the ink over and it changes both of those pieces. This is a fun way to stretch your distress inks. It works very well with distress ink because distress ink reacts with water, which allows it to transfer from the one side to the other but you could do this with other dye inks. 
I repeated the process to transfer even more ink and look at those two beautiful backgrounds we end up with. Now I think it's best to see the technique in action a lot, so let's do some more. Here I have dark green distress ink on white cardstock, and then I clear heat embossed the same image. I'm attaching it to a light blue cardstock. Now I'm generously spraying that green side with water, the side that has the distress ink and the heat embossing. I'll then close my little pieces together and run it back and forth through the die cut machine. I like to go back and forth a few times. While I do this, that green distress ink that is not under the clear embossing will transfer slightly over to the light blue cardstock. Anything under the clear embossing will stay true to color. I like to do the process twice, as I mentioned, so it transfers more color, but that's totally up to you. So you'll see on the clear embossed side, our embossing stays dark green, but it lightens around it. That's because some of that ink transferred over to that light blue piece on the left hand side. I like the contrast on the piece on the left between the light blue background and the green ink that transferred onto it. This particular background stamp works so well for this technique that I did several more. This one on the right started out as seedless preserves covering white cardstock. I clear heat embossed the background stamp and then did the ink transfer technique onto a light pink piece of cardstock. That's the one over on the left. I love how these two backgrounds have such a different look to them. Here's one where I used a salted ocean background, heat embossed the stamp, and I'm transferring to a sage colored cardstock. It's such a unique look, so you can really change up the look of your transferred piece by using different colors of cardstock. Now this background started as white cardstock and I did peeled paint over the whole thing and then some fired brick red over half. And then I did the ink transfer technique onto that light pink cardstock on the right and you can see the cool results that we get. Now here's another one. This time I used the new Salvage Patina Distress Ink. Great new color from Tim Holtz. I'll link to it below. I used that on half of the cardstock and then I used the um, Twisted Citron on the other half and then used a brush to blend between. And that ended up doing a great ink transfer onto white cardstock. Let's look at a different background stamp and also look at that Salvage Patina, the new Distress Ink color, a little bit closer. Look how beautiful this color is. Definitely by far my favorite of the Distress Inks. That's my favorite color. My whole house is this pool color. I covered white cardstock with that and then I used peacock feathers, which used to be my favorite, to apply some darker color on one end and then I blended between the two with my blending tool. Notice I still am going direct paper to make sure I get a lot of ink on that cardstock. Then I'm adding a little bit of Mermaid Lagoon on one end. Look how beautiful that is. A really fast way to get a blended look. I then clear heat embossed the Simon Says Stamp Spring Flowers background stamp. I've used this one before. I'll link to it up in the top right. And then I did the ink transfer technique once again. And look at the beautiful version we get over here when I transferred onto white cardstock. Such a fun technique that gives you two backgrounds in one. I will link here to the, on the top right to another video where I show a lot more about this particular technique. I call it faux monoprint in that technique, but it's the same thing. So check that out if you want to learn more about this. Okay, now here's one where I use the Solid Grid, a new background stamp from Simon Says Stamp. I clear heat embossed it over a background that I did with Lucky Clover Distress Ink and uh, Sa Chip Sapphire. Now this time there's a lot of solid area. So I use a brush to dab off some of that water that we spray on it. I want the water to absorb into the cardstock around the embossing, but not sit on top of the embossing. So just dabbing it with a cloth helps. I then did the ink transfer technique onto light blue cardstock and check out those two very different backgrounds that I get. I am a big fan of techniques that result in two for one, and this is my favorite using distress inks. All right, now I wanted to show you that this technique works also with single images. Here I'm using the Simon Says Stamp Flower Cluster Wood Mounted Stamp. Nothing stamps better than a wood mounted stamp. And this one is a beautiful one. 
So I clear heat emboss this on top of a piece of white cardstock that I covered with abandoned coral distress ink and a little fired brick red towards the center. The reason we clear heat emboss is it traps some color behind it and keeps it true to color. Then when we spray the water, everything around it will react. All the ink around the stamped image will react and cause that ink to transfer. And look at this. Both backgrounds are completely different looking, but we were able to create them both at the same time with this ink transfer or faux monoprint technique. Again, if you want to see this particular technique in action much more with tons of examples, I will link to a video at the top right here and at the end of this video if you want to check that out. But next, let's look at this ink transfer technique using stencils. The nice thing is this ink transfer technique works great with pretty much any stencil you may have. I'll do two different examples and they're very different stencils. First, I'm using the new Simon Says Stamp Rose Bouquet Stencil. I like this one because it's bigger, so I can use it with my gel press or for slimline cards. I am once again starting with a nice heavyweight white cardstock and covering it very generously with Distress Ink. The nice thing about this is you do not need to be careful to blend colors if you want multiple colors on your background. This technique is very forgiving, so you'll notice I don't look for a great blend here. You just want to get down as much color as possible. Okay, so now I have my die cut machine and I have my inked background that I'll spray generously with water. Most of the water absorbs into the cardstock, but you might see a little shine on the top still. I lay that on my cutting plate, then my stencil, and then a piece of plain light colored cardstock. I have ivory here. Then I do my other cutting plate. So basically I'm putting those three layers between my cutting plates as if I were doing die cutting with a wafer thin die. Very simple. It's just applying pressure. So what happens in the open areas of the stencil, some of the ink transfers off of our inked background, which you see here, over to our uninked background. And what's really cool is the stencil leaves an impression in the cardstock too. So you have a little bit of a raised effect on both pieces. Such a cool technique. This particular stencil works great for it. My next example has picked raspberry and uh, seedless preserves covering white cardstock, spraying that generously with water. And then I'll pick that up and put it in my die cut machine. Again, you put this in your die cut machine as if you were doing a wafer thin die die cutting, how you usually use the die cut machine. You put your stencil on top of that, then a light pink or light colored piece of cardstock, and then run it back and forth a few times. I do usually use white cardstock, but if there's a lot of open area, like with this stencil, a light colored piece of cardstock is nice so that the background isn't too much white. Now remember at this point, they're still a little wet, so I gave it some time to dry, and here are the results. Look how beautiful they are. Remember, the stencil does make an imprint on both, which really makes it stand out even more. Such a beautiful technique. On the inked one, you get a lighter background, and on this one, the raised areas get that color from the ink that transferred to it. Now let's try this technique with a detailed stencil, the Simon Says Stamp Cosmo Flowers. It's an older one. I have a piece of white cardstock here, inked generously, and then I sprayed it with water, put it on my cutting plate, now I'll lay the stencil on top, a piece of ivory cardstock on top, and then my other cutting plate. I'll put that back and forth a few times, and when I take it out, look at our two different backgrounds. Now the ink transfer on to the piece on the left isn't great because I didn't use enough water. If you get a look like that where it doesn't all transfer, you need to use more water. But I thought I could still use it and just cover up that area. And this piece I think is just gorgeous because of the impression the stencil made and you have a very subtle look. Great for a background on any card. Okay, so now I have a bunch of backgrounds done. Lots of them. I spent the afternoon doing these. It was so much fun. But notice a lot of them have curled up because I use so much water on my cardstock for this technique. I do recommend cardstock over watercolor paper for this as the ink will transfer better. But what I do is I put that warped cardstock piece into a folded piece of printer paper and I run it through my laminator on the hot setting. 
Thankfully, my laminator doesn't get hot enough to mess with the clear embossing, but look at it, it flattens it nicely. My clear embossing will get a little cloudy looking from that heat, so all I do when I take it out is add some more heat to it with my heat gun, and it makes the clear embossing shiny again. Now look at this piece, it's really warped. I put it between the folded piece of printer paper, run it through my laminator. Again, it's on the hot setting. And when it comes out, it'll be much flatter. And now it'll be easier to work with as we add it to cards. I do this anytime I have a warped piece of paper that I want to use for card making. Next, I wanted to show you one more thing you can do to these backgrounds, any of the backgrounds that has clear heat embossing on it. If you want to remove that shine, you get a really cool look. What I have is a dish towel on my work surface, a piece of printer paper, have one of my backgrounds that has clear embossing on it. I put another piece of printer paper on top, and then I have an iron that's set to high without the steam. I put that pressure over it, and it transfers the clear embossing powder from my inked background onto the printer paper. And I repeat this process twice. This causes your background to be more muted, you don't have the shine on it, and just gives it a really cool look. I've demonstrated this particular technique in more detail in another video, which I'll link here on the top right if you want to check that out. But I had a lot of these vibrant backgrounds that had clear heat embossing and I wanted to kind of tone them down. And by doing this technique, it helped to do that. Again, printer paper on top. You do not want the embossing powder to touch your iron. You don't want to ruin your iron. Then go to a fresh part of your printer paper and repeat it to remove any more. Now my iron never touches clothes um, because I don't like to iron, but you could also get an inexpensive iron just for crafting if you want. So I did that iron off technique on all of these backgrounds and now I like them even more. I just like that smooth look without the shine. The clear embossing had trapped the darker color underneath it, allowing us to do that cool technique. But then we can remove the clear embossing and we get these two-tone backgrounds and it's really smooth and looks beautiful. Okay, now we have a bunch of backgrounds. I'm going to turn some of them into cards today. I have some tips for you. And then some of them into cards in my next video where I share another technique. Because this was a two for one technique today, I have so many backgrounds I just couldn't fit it into one video. All right, let's start with that middle card there that says, never forget how amazing you are. That's from an awesome new die from Simon Says Stamp, How Amazing You Are die. It has the shadow and the words themselves. And the words connect, which makes it really easy to assemble the die cuts. I'm a big fan of sentiments like that because it's a great for any occasion and it fills a card nicely. Here's one of my backgrounds. This started with Peacock Feather Distress Ink on white cardstock. I clear heat embossed on top, did the ink transfer onto another piece of cardstock, then I ironed off the embossing powder and look at that beautiful background. I added the sentiment with white cardstock and black, and then I added some flowers to it just to add a little bit of interest. These flowers I just purchased from My Favorite Things. These are great because there's large flowers and small flowers, and they have faux stitching on them. There's also stems and leaves. Rarely will you find a set with so many different options in them, so I thought it would be a good investment and something I can add to cards such as this one, where I can kind of scatter them in the background, and the different size options were really helpful. I'm a big fan of florals, but you could always get a set like this of stars or hearts or other little accents that work with a lot of different cards. You'll see the set in another video coming very soon. Now a couple of my other cards use this My Favorite Things More Brilliant Butterfly stamp set. This is a great one. It's the second of this style. I've used the first one in another video, which I'll link up here on the top right. But I like this one because the butterflies are large and you can stamp it in different colors. So I was able to stamp these butterflies to match the backgrounds I created today. I also used the Simon Says Stamp Paper Hug Wood Mounted Stamp. This is a great one to stamp on envelopes. I also now have this on display in my craft room. I thought it was a nice decoration for a card maker's craft room. I like to put some wood mounted stamps on display. So I stamped that on my matching envelope for my next card and a few of my others. Now this one also uses that more brilliant butterfly stamp set and then one of our ink transfer backgrounds. 
This ink transfer background started as light blue cardstock, and then we did the ink transfer technique on it. So it has that soft inked look to it. I then did a white oval die cut in the center, added the butterfly and some black gemstones, and the new Simon Says Stamp Wishing You Joy die set. This has the shadow die and the words themselves, and I did the shadow in white and the words in black. That's a great sentiment that can be used for many occasions and great for birthdays. I reach most for those sentiments that will work for many occasions. Okay, now on the next couple cards and in my next video, I'll be using the Simon Says Stamp Slimline Marquee Die. Now this is just one of the dies in the set. These are slimline dies, so the biggest one covers a slimline card, and it pokes those tiny little holes around the outside. Well, I use the medium size one for these cards. I don't make slimline cards much, but I like to use slimline dies like this to create banners for my regular size cards, which you'll see me do. I also use the Simon Says Stamp Friendly Flowers 6x8 stamp set. This one is a great one for especially the sentiments. There are great sentiments to put inside of a card and also small sentiments you can use on the front. I use the cursive Sending Smiles and then a tiny one that says Across the Miles. So that white piece on the background with the open dots, that's that marquee die that's meant for a slimline card. I just cut it basically in half and glued it to the top center of the card. You can see our background still, which is one that I did the ink transfer technique and ironed off the clear embossing so it had a smoother, subtle look. I then added one of my butterflies with some black gemstones. Now this is a design that I will make more of and also show you in my next video, but I'll change up the images on it. Here's another one. This time I did it off center towards the top left instead. And that is one of our ink transfer backgrounds where I started with light pink cardstock and transferred some of the ink from an inked piece with the heat embossing on it. So the previous one was more bold. This one's a little more subtle in the background. And I like that I could ink up those butterflies to match whatever I had in the background. Now you've heard the expression that simple is best, and I think in this case it is, as this is my favorite of my cards today. Now on the background, I used an embossing folder, I'll show you that in a moment, on a white note card. Now the heart there, that is from the ink transfer background that we did earlier, using that wood-mounted floral stamp. Look how cool it looks die cut into a heart. Just add some fun to it. I like that by die cutting it into a heart, we bring it to a focal point of the card. Now for those little accents on the heart, I use the Simon Says Stamp Mini Flowers and Leaves die set, which I use a lot to create little accents. And I also use some pearls. The 3D embossing folder that I used is the new Simon Says Stamp Floral Centerpiece, which kind of goes down the center, which is really great for a simple card design. And then the sentiment is from a new Simon Says Stamp Encouraging Words Sentiment Strip Set, which comes in white with black and black with white. I like the encouraging messages in there and it looked great with this particular card. I plan to go back and make more with this design later on using some leftover backgrounds that I have from other videos. For this one, I also took one of my bold ink transfer backgrounds and used a die to cut it smaller to create a focal point. I used an oval die and then matted it with another oval and added it to a white note card that I used an embossing folder on. By the way, all of my cards today are four and a quarter by five and a half. Now that uh, sentiment strip is from the Simon Says Stamp Encouraging Words strips that I showed you earlier. The embossing folder is this new one, Magnolia Branches, absolutely beautiful, and it adds detail to the background. And the flower die cut, that's the Simon Says Stamp Poppy flower, which I've used before in videos. Now before we go, I wanted to give you a sneak peek at two of the cards that will be in my next video, because these will feature some of the backgrounds we created today. For example, on this one, you can see one of our ink transfer backgrounds. It still has the clear heat embossing on it. Now up there on that white die cut, you can see some flowers with tiny white dots. That's the cool technique I'll be showing you in the next video. And I use the new Simon Says Stamp Painted Flower Stamp Set for those. Now that You Shine definitely will be on my favorites list for this year. Those dies are new from Simon Says Stamp also, and I will link to those below too. I like that it is something that you can use for many occasions once again. 
And here's a peek at another one. You can see another of our ink transfer backgrounds that still has the heat embossing on it. And again, on both of these, I use that marquee rectangle die with the little dots on the outside edge because I liked that design and thought it was a great way to show off those backgrounds. On this one, I use the new Simon Says Stamp Swoopy Thanks die, fantastic one. And the leaves, they're from the painted flower stamp set that I used on that last example too. So there's a peek at my next video. I do link to these supplies along with everything else in my YouTube description if you want to check them out. And I still have all of these backgrounds to make cards from. Now I hope you'll give this technique a try either with stamps or with stencils. It's definitely my favorite technique to do with distress inks. But if you don't have distress inks, it will work with distress oxide inks. It just gives a slightly different look, but you can definitely try that. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch my videos. I know they're long, but I hope you learn a thing or two. In the middle here, I'll link to other videos with this faux mono print or ink transfer technique. Definitely worth watching if you want to learn more. And you can head to my blog for more information. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. See you soon.